That was such a delay. There we go. All right. All right. Thank you. That happens every time at this meeting, and invariably, people jump every time. I love it. Love it. <laughs> All right, we'll try this again. Chair Marie Hoda. Here. Maggie Burns. Here. Bryn Dunny. Here. Scott Gilbert. Here. Edie Hughes. Here. Gina Oberding. Here. Oh, I totally like looked at this <laughs> you. Um, Dina Phelps. Here. Ingo Escolaison, Dwayne Tucker. Here. Excuse, we have Andy Sakaris. Amy Wilson and City Council member Chelsea Nunacal. Staff, we have Director Christina Underhill and Library and Cultural Arts Manager Bethany Lafferty. Approved. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes? Any opposed? All right. Um, no public comments, I'm guessing. No. All right, then we can move on to report. Um, the statistical report. So, as I've been trying to prepare you for, the total patrons and the Englewood patrons registered has um, dropped significantly because we did delete um, expired accounts. Um, we've also been cleaning up a lot of duplicate accounts. Um, and then we were able to accurately divide patron records between true Englewood residents and those outside of Englewood. So the current um, number of Englewood patrons with library cards is just over 12,000, and our total registered patrons is 20, uh, 26,768. That is, that total is still a little inflated because we are continuing to um, review the duplicate accounts. Uh, the <clears throat> issue we discovered is that the online self registration that is available does not prohibit an individual from signing up for multiple accounts. And what is ending up happening predominantly is people will sign up for an account, they get a temporary number, it's good for three months, when it expires, they sign up for another one, and then they sign up for another one three months after that. So um, our patron experience librarian, Carrie Watson, is working with um, the Marmot Library Network uh, on adjusting some of our processes with regard to the self-registration so that it can go into a more limited capacity that um, prompts people to come in and update their accounts to a full service card uh, within 30 days and that they won't have access to any online resources during that 30 days. Um, and it's the online resource access that is predominantly the, the goal of doing the self-registration. So we're hoping that that's gonna kind of crack down on that and then we'll be able to maintain more accurate patron records. Um, and I think that there's been some um, weeding going on and deselecting materials. And that's just kind of a ebb and flow of collection management because you gotta make room for the new stuff. Um, we did rearrange quite a bit while we were closed. Um, and I think that led to some older items being withdrawn to the collection and really got rid of a lot of our um, like physical copy reference materials because a lot of that stuff really is more available online, especially when it's more up to date and stuff like that. So that's um, was the dip in the collection. And then under the circulation area, I wanted to point out the culture cast use. So March, it was kind of like in March that we really started having the culture passes live. So we did have 18 separate um, checkouts of various culture passes. Um, it was the 
I, I thought I was going to remember, but I don't. It, I know it's the butterfly, butterfly pavilion, and two other locations were the three that were used. Um, so we're excited to see that number continue to increase, especially as we get into the warmer months when people are going to be doing outings and stuff like that. Um, and there's still more um, institutions being added to the list um, of available passes that you can get. So. Um, excited to add that to our circulation numbers. And then there there will also, as we get our other stuff online with the book club kits. And I mean, the book club kits, I think, currently just go into our regular physical um, checkouts. Um, but like the other non traditional things, like the board games, the story time kits, and the homeschooling kits. Those will start, I'll start having that in there, probably with some kind of single category for like non traditional or something like that. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. and, and it says vis physical visitors 2715 this year, as opposed to 9044. Yeah, so in what is that? That's a huge discrepancy. So the the um, other change that I didn't make until January of this year, with regard to the physical visitors, was we just we discovered last year that the number that was being put in in was an in and out number. So it realistically From last year, yeah, yeah. So those should have all basically been half of what they are. So that should have been more like forty seven hundred. Library can it open? Maybe? We, yeah, and so like the physical visitors for March is pretty low because we didn't actually open right. until March. Okay, 13. yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, in and I didn't make the change for reporting the visitor numbers until January, just so the whole year could be kept consistent. So in essence, the numbers from 2022 should be thought about as half of what's shown um, because those were physical visitors. Right, because that was an, like an in and out count, and they should have been having it, cutting it in half the whole time to account for a single person going in and out. So that's that's why it looks even less, um, is because of that. And then it's definitely much lower, too, because we were only open. Yeah, well, it's only two days yeah. difference, but it would be and more. Be, yeah, when we reopened, it definitely took at least two weeks to start seeing like closer to our regular kind of traffic um, yeah our usage because the like the first few days like i think the only people that came were story time <laughs> um so it did take a while to get people back in the habit mm -hmm. um one of our very very regular people um ernie he finally started coming back on saturday yeah um he'd been going to bemis so um it yeah it took him almost three weeks to come back so but I think we're getting back to that normal traffic. It'll be interesting to see the numbers um, as the months progress with the increased security and maybe the impact to the surrounding community with you know security and mm -hmm. people's perception of right. Like that, I think that will be really telling. Yeah. So I great job keeping mm -hmm. track of all these numbers. <laughs> And then everything else is pretty pretty standard. I feel like we're you know moving steadily along with children's and teens programs. Um, adult programs were kind of um, lower coming back to reopening because we're still kind of re-evaluating what programs to offer for adults because we really want to offer things people want to attend. Um, so there's been a few things that we're kind of cutting back that you know we offered some uh, computer classes that people just are not attending. So we're trying to kind of think about those differently and offer something different that's going to be more attractive to people. Um, so the adult programs are a little bit better. Um, we didn't have too many incidents for March. Um, there were two people excluded, um, one for drug use in the second floor bathroom that came down to the library, and one for pornography viewing on the computers. It was the same word. It wasn't said. It was literally the second day. We are so excited for when that happened. Like, I don't know what we'll do exactly. But like, going on. Yeah. So it's the second day the bathrooms were open, but the 
fact that this individual yes. was discovered yes. in the second floor bathrooms was 100% because of the additional security. Yes. Right? Because they were the ones that found him. And then he came downstairs and kind of snuck into the library. And they came and talked to TJ. TJ. And so, like, the whole thing was able to be taken care of. Okay. And um, the other thing that's interesting about it is that the exclusion for that individual is for 120 days because they have been previously excluded. Um, so we're now getting to the mm -hmm. point where we're one year in of this um, process that the city attorney's office um, developed last year around this time. So we're able to see, are we having repeat problems with people who've been excluded before? Because if they have prior exclusions, they can be excluded for a while. There, there are no permanent Nothing permanent. Um, the only real long-term exclusion we have right now um, is for a, from, for two years, uh, starting in late October, um, and that was actually kind of overrides anything the city does because it was issued by the Arapahoe County District Court. Right. Yeah. So it would have to be like an outside entity that um, lays out anything longer. Or I think 180 days is our max. That's what I remember. Hey, can I ask on the digital usage? I mean, a lot of other things would be explained by the fact that merch was largely lost. Um, mm -hmm. But I was just curious on the um, Canopy and, and the Access 360. So Canopy, I'm actually surprised that it wasn't any higher than that, I'll be honest with you. Um, Access 360 is like a s access to ebooks predominantly actually used by the schools oh. but it's not very user friendly oh. um and so it's not used that much because it's just it's kind of hard to navigate but um i did meet with joanna um a couple of weeks ago and kind of pitched her some of the ideas that um, kimberly and i have been discussing and one of the big ones is to look to replace access 360 with um, an overdrive platform that's specific for schools and so that it's more user friendly and now meets some of the criteria that the schools have for content so we're going to be looking at making that change this year because that doesn't seem to, it's just not a product that's getting used as well as we'd like to see but i think it's also because it's not a Necessarily the best product. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, is that eight users or eight hours? Like, it's eight checkouts. Eight checkouts. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a whole lot. The material is limited. I've checked out stuff before and can't find half the stuff I would like. Yeah. So yeah. I, I would agree on maybe moving to overdrive. Yeah, and I think they'll they'll probably will even be a greater selection of materials with the an overdrive catalog of, of titles. So um yeah, I think that will be better off. Is this the interface similar to the key or I haven't seen okay. a demonstration of it yet, but I would imagine it would be not similar to like what you see on your phone, okay. Libby, but similar to the desktop uh, operation. Cool. Yeah. Are you interested in ideas or programming, like adult programming? Or sure. I mean, if you have any, I'd be happy to have to hear them. I am. I was just telling Marie before we officially started. I am working on a programming policy as well as a program proposal um, procedure for outside groups and individuals to propose programs to the library, whether it's something that they would like to the library to present themselves or require people to present them, or it's a community group that says we're experts on this topic. We'd like to do this presentation for you for X dollar amount or for free. So I'm, I'm working on a process for that right now so that we'd be able to promote to the community. If you have a program you'd like to pitch to the library, here's how you do it. So they do have some stuff in the works and a lot of it is being geared towards summer reading. So to kind of kick off a new set of programs uh, for adults for the summer. I do know that. So there's a couple of things that are going to come through during the summer reading program. Because we're doing a summer reading program for adults this year. You have to read adult books or teenage kids books. Mm -hmm. well, I know there's going to be um, a movie series during the summer. 
feel like this was the one they're sticking with that since it's 2023, it's going to be a series of um, movies that are all from 20. Please bring your items to circulation for checkout at this time. The public restrooms are now closed for the evening. Public computers will shut down in five minutes. Please save or print your work now. Thank you. Um, so the movie series is going to be movies from 1980. <laughs> um, I, I think what the plan is. And then there's going to be some things at a park. There's going to be a cornhole tournament at one of the parks. I don't think they ever decided on the park. And then there was something else. Maybe it's another murder mystery. The last adult murder mystery we did went over actually fairly well. So I think it was in December. There was lower attendance than the parent one that they did for like because they did a teen murder mystery and then the parents were like, this one's so cool. So then they did one for parents. That one was super well attended. But the December one didn't, I think only had like 10 people maybe, but it was kind of right before the holidays. So that probably wasn't that attended. I think they're doing another one of those during the summer. Um, and then that is all in addition to the book clubs that go year round. And this is going to be open. Oh, no, the, this is just the library. Oh, okay. The library oh, the programming. Yeah. And so then, but it's going to be for this during the summer. And then the summer reading program itself for the adults will be similar to what we just did for the um, winter reading program. I don't know for sure if Corinne ultimately decided to do it by the number of books you read or the amount of time you spend reading, which is more of the, what we do for the kids is I think the amount of time um, that's spent. But I think for adults, it might be like read 10 books and then you get prizes and raffle stuff. So that's what the summer reading program part will be. Which is like, Encourage people to read and keep track of the books that they read, and we'll have. If they did a bingo in the winter, we'll probably do another one of those. The kids always do a bingo too. Um, all that I'm aware of right now, the, there's a, a small committee of staff that are working with Corinne on the adult summer reading program activity. So they've been meeting like once. Any other? Okay. Can you move on to the action plan? Um, so this is the new official 2023 action plan, which is also now updated on the library's website. Um, so for the first item, the the volunteer program, um, I had a staff meeting last month with to discuss. Um, Creating a new volunteer application slash interest form. We're actually we're calling it an interest form, um, and we have our first draft of that ready. And just need to do uh, some little tweaks for including logos and return information. Um, and then um, we confirm some general areas for um, where we will definitely have volunteer tasks and. The interest form has a space for a person to indicate, oh, I'd, I'd like to, you know, clean and shelf books, or I'd like to help with program prep. So they can kind of indicate the areas they're interested in. Um, and then, the, but the actual tasks, we're still kind of fine tuning that as we um, move forward. Um, we have our draft documents are, are going to be uh, reviewed tomorrow and then finalized and we will be working with communications to update the volunteer page on the library's website um, and then also have communications kind of help us promote that we're doing a call for for volunteers at the library next week is or I'm sorry the week of April 17th is national volunteer week so that Wednesday we're going to kind of have our call go out and then um, we'll just keep defining the volunteer tasks and developing a training process. And our plan is to do a monthly volunteer orientation. And so the first one will be Friday, May 26th. And then going forward, it'll be the last Friday every month. If we have new volunteers that turn in interest forms, we will schedule them for their orientation that day and then establish whatever their schedule will be. Okay. So, is that the Memorial Day part? Mm -hmm. 
We don't have we have we don't have any staff off. That's why everyone's like, let's do it the last Friday of the month because we have so few yeah. meetings at the end of the month is what we were looking for. So I guess we'll just see how much response we get. Hopefully people will be available, and if they're not, we'll schedule it. But thanks for pointing that out. Um. <laughs> But yeah, so we have um, Hannah, our new one of our new librarian ones. She is going to coordinate the volunteer program, um, and Carrie and myself and Hannah are working on all the details to get everything up and running. And then she will kind of be the coordinator of uh, assigning tasks, scheduling volunteers, all the stuff in the library. So we're really excited to get moving on that. Um, the cultural arts passes so that this is like almost complete, but um, we currently have eight institutions now live on the library website with that you can reserve culture passes for. Um, and then we have at least two, but maybe even three more that are in the works right now because we're just in various stages of completing the contracts and purchasing the memberships and getting um, the details that we need to put on our site. And then promotional materials have been created by communications. And so far we've put um, something in the summer rec guide. There's gonna be a little blurb. Um, and we do have something in our internal uh, monthly newsletter um, to promote it to staff. And then the week of the 23rd is National Library Week. And that's when we'll be like fully promoting that kind of out to the community. Um, more strongly with social media and email and stuff like that. So we're excited about that because we were hoping we'd have all of our stuff by the end of April, but I'm not sure if they will be, those last few will be up there or not, but we're pretty close to getting those done. Um, and then we'll be moving on to the other parts of the non-traditional items as after we've really launched the culture patches and passes. So excited about that. Um, the next item, partnership with Englewood Schools. Um, I met with uh, Joanna Polzin a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, March 31st. I was like, oh, I forgot when it was. Um, and we discussed some different ideas that we both have about working together. Um, and so one of the things, like I said before, was um, I think I mentioned this last month that we wanted to do the email or the library card like automatic library card for all Englewood students with their student IDs. So we'll be working with Marmot to figure that out. And Kimberly and I recently had a discussion and she said right before COVID, this was like in the works, but then kind of COVID just derailed everybody's attention. And so it kind of fell by the wayside. Um, so she was you know, reassuring me that Marmot has done this with other libraries and they knew that we wanted to do it. So it'll just kind of be picking up the thread where it got left off. So um, we'll see what we have to do with that. And then, you know, Joanna will help me coordinate with the IT staff at the schools to figure out how we'll kind of keep things updated for student access. Um, and so I've worked, you know, sent a request to Marmot to see if we can plan a meeting to discuss the details and what, we, what kind of things we would need. And then the next part of those will be, um, like I mentioned before, about Access 360 changing over from Overdrive. Um, Kimberly and I will be researching that over the summer, and hopefully that will be put into place before the student begins. Um, staff development, all new positions have been filled, but now two of them aren't going to be vacant. So, she, we have two, yes. Um, we had one of our part timers from last year resigned right before we reopened. She had sort of like kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity to go do something in Mexico. So she's like got a job in Mexico. I don't, I can't remember exactly what she's doing. Um, and then one of our recent new hires just has had some personal like issues that are being complicated by her, you know, being at work, um, and it's just not working out for her to be here. So um, next week there will be interviews to fill those two positions back down a little bit, um, but it's still a lot better. 
and the the newest tires that started on March 23rd are acclimating really well. Um, and the delivery will close in five minutes. Please finish your work and head toward the exit. Thank you for visiting. Thirteen are really great. They're just seriously amazing. They get so much stuff done. They're so excited, and it just is tremendous what we can accomplish. At this um, the other thing is that we are um, we are establishing some internal staff committees, and one of them is going to be um, like a training committee. Um, so, uh, one of the library supervisors will lead that committee. It will probably be free. Um, and then um, there will be library associates from the different kind of groups like children's, you know, adult programming, tech services, possibly, um, and then one from area state of circulation. So that we have people who are kind of giving different perspectives on what new staff need to learn and then also volunteering to be a staff person that the new hire can shadow. But some people aren't comfortable providing training and instruction um, or they just, you know, they know what they need to know, but they're not really comfortable imparting their knowledge on somebody else. And we have found that like forcing people to do that doesn't really um yield good results. Yeah. So having people who are interested in doing that and willing to do it is going to be a lot better. So that's what that committee will be about. Um, and then our first staff in service will be in June. So I'm going to some plans for doing some stuff for that. Stuff for that. Um, and that will be sort of like a half training, half project. Then the last part is um, the library marketing. So Carrie, Watson and Quinn Barnett um, are, I think that they just concluded it last week, and, or it might be this Thursday. They've been doing a library marketing series through Library Journal online, and so they're wrapping up that training. Um, and they've already been utilizing some of the things they've learned through the training in their um, daily work and how they are organizing current projects. Um, and then communications, I've been working a lot with them on promoting stuff for the library, which I think has been really great. They really helped promote the art exhibit, and I was a little nervous, but at a certain point, like they just started pouring in all the artists that were interested in exhibiting. So it's really great. I mean, artists for the, that have their work up. So great. Yeah. And then, yeah, our upcoming like promotions with them are the culture classes. Um, there's a whole plan for the library art exhibits through the year. Um, and then the, the volunteer stuff. Yeah. Any questions about your this? All right. Um, the money request this month. Okay. Um, no new business, I think. So we can just go on full business and then update on the faculty. I'll let you take it, Jen. Um, I think it's been going really well. Um, like I said, the very first day, it was kind of funny when we first opened the door, there actually was one guy waiting to come in, but he was the only person in the library for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> A lot of the staff were like, it's just gonna be crazy, and it wasn't, and I knew it wouldn't be, but um, it was fine. So it was just like a slow trickle back, um, and like just I think word of mouth spread to um, some of our regular patrons, and they slowly started coming back. And we didn't have the bathrooms obviously right away. We only opened the bathrooms. It's been a little over a week now, um, but when we reopened the bathrooms. The new procedure that we're using for that has not met very much resistance, if any at all. Um, our new process is to notify people that they just have to sign on a badge to ask, access the, uh, the bathroom. So they go to the library security desk, they give their name to the security person or the you know the designated person in charge if they're covering, and then they receive a badge that looks very similar to like our employee badges, but it says um, library restroom only, and all it can do is 
put them into those restrooms, um, and then they return it. And we time in. Please exit in the building. We will reopen tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Thank you. Um, they, we, like, write down the time that we issue the badge and that uh, and if there's anybody that's in there for more than 45 minutes, somebody will follow up and just say and see if there's any problems at any issue. Um, and sometimes we utilize the allied guards um, to help. That's been helpful. Um, the study room procedures um, has not really much pushback. There's been one, there's one individual in particular who has been complaining about having to give his name and email address for the sign up thing but like that's what the form asks for this is the information we need if you want to reserve the study room like it's just as simple as that but he i think has some other things going on that are making him a little bit inappropriate um, so we had an incident today with him where it wasn't like anything really bad but he ultimately was asked to leave for the day because he was just being a little bit inappropriate with staff, just passing me. Like, I, don't, I don't think it's the study room rules. I think it's the person. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, but other than that, I mean, really behavior wise, we haven't encountered too much problem. Um, and when we do, you know, observe behavior that's, you know, not appropriate, we're able to address it right away. It definitely helps having the allied guards. There was a gentleman in this back space over here a couple weeks ago, and the guards saw through the windows that he just was making a mess on the table and was actually starting to take his clothes off, and they came in, and then they directed him out of the library. But, like, that could have taken us a lot longer to discover because you can't really see over there. You're scanning the cameras. It might take a few cycles before you notice something was amiss. So it definitely helps having the additional security in the building. So um, I'll bring up too, like it's been nice having security to that incident where an individual was looking at inappropriate pictures um, and we had to ask to leave. He got very, um, he was up in staff's face. And when I turned around, three security guards were standing behind me and I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I kind of just step back and they took it from there. And so it's been amazing to having the additional security. Like, I'm a, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's super helpful. It's great to have the additional support and backup. Um, a couple of bumps here and there is they're kind of learning the procedures and rules for the Civic Center and the city overall for the standards of behavior. But um, we do have a weekly meeting with the uh, security uh, supervisor and myself, um, and then one of our library uh, security staff, depending on who's working that day. Um, so that way we're keeping our communication up to date and stuff like that. So has it been a consistent team? Um, Probably like getting like, like, like that. Yeah, at least you know better. There's definitely a core group of them. Dwight. Okay is um, here daily and we had him in the Civic Center prior to okay. the closure. Um, so he's helpful. And then there's another guy um, that worked, he pr predominantly does the outside patrol, but he was also has been here since last year. Um, so he has a familiarity with the library staff and then just kind of the processes and procedures. So that's helpful. And then the, all the new people in between, um, have been really, you know, great and communicative and they'll ask us questions and TJ has been making a point of going out and talking to all of them, introducing them. There is a site supervisor as well. who is staffed in the court. Okay. Um, so we're able to talk with her also about training issues so that we can, you know, give feedback to her and then she can push it out to the, to the guards. And that's really helpful. So she joined our weekly meeting this last Friday too. Okay. So, so that's working. And then, I mean, honestly, I do feel like we're seeing more new people coming in um, as they hear that the library's reopened and we're still doing a lot of new library cards. Um, and yeah, I think it's going, it's going fine. It's definitely more relaxed. I think the staff feel more relaxed. Um, I think people feel safer. So, cool. yeah. 
and I, I mean, our staffing is so much better too. Like I can't, can't stress how much stuff I feel like I'm able to get done. You don't feel like so much stress from two people yeah. being out there. And, and like, you know, and I was um, reviewing the library board meeting videos from early last year, just looking for some other information. But one of the things that stood out to me was discussion about the minimum number of staff to keep the library open. And at that time it was um, discussed as being four. And we really, we got down to three at the end of it last year. Like we were running the library of three people and I honestly don't think I'll ever do that again. Yeah, three, three is not enough. Four is really not enough either. But um, I feel like, cause we, were, we had a couple of times where we only had two staff and we had to close. But I think if we're only going to have three, mm -hmm. it might have. I think that's got to be our cutoff. Is if there's not at least four people, who are not in the position to properly and safely run the library. So that when I saw it, when I heard that from last year, so I think that was discussed in January 2020's meeting, and I was like, that's really telling me because we were in dire streets. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's when we heard about the mask coming down and being fat. Yeah. yeah, I think that was a problem. <laughs> yeah, someone pulled their mask down and like, yeah. Or so we need to get their test results. I, yeah, so otherwise, yeah. I think, I mean, it feels really, it, it feels so much better to have the amount of staff that we have. Like on Saturdays, we usually have five or six people here, which honestly, the day that we generally had three people last year was on Saturdays, and I was always one of the three. Yeah. Um, so it was really, really tough, but it's so much more comfortable knowing you have enough staff. So that's making a huge difference. Um, and you're able to take meetings. Yeah, plan that. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I clean all the boxes out of my office finally. I've <laughs> been in there for months. And even got my new office chairs. <laughs> yeah, so I think, I don't know if you have anything else, Christina, about the reopening, but. No, oh, it's felt good in here, like she said. Like it's nice to walk through. It feels controlled. Mm -hmm. You know, it's before it was kind of like, what are you gonna find? Yeah, when you walk and through. People you know. have really like, um, you know, said thank you for you know getting back open, and they like the new setup we have with the security desk right at the yeah. door. Mm -hmm. um, we've had some questions about the other door being closed, but no real pushback. You know, we've had some questions about how can people who need more accessibility mm -hmm. um, get over. And so now that the North Lobby is open, it does allow for people to use the elevator to go up and over instead of think of having to walk around the outside of the building. Okay. So that's better. Um, but I think overall people understand and appreciate the effort to create a more you know, safe and controlled environment. Um, we also rearranged a lot of the furniture um, to kind of influence, you know, behavior because the seating is more out in the open and we've closed off several outlets that were in little nooks and stuff like that that people would sit on the floor to use and we're like we can't sit on the floor you need to be in furniture so we just covered up the outlets to reduce that type of uh, thing happening as well so like just changing the physical environment does change how people behave in the north uh, lobby and the north elevator are they available anytime the library is open they are open during regular business hours for the city um so, so it's like monday through friday like eight to five basically yeah. um however currently the locking mechanism for the lower level doors are show as like a, a joint system mm -hmm. so if the south lobby is unlocked the north lobby will be unlocked um so they are you thinking like if somebody's uh you know um, like let's say outside here at 6 p.m on a weekday or something and they come in the north door technically do this yes. yeah do the up and over yeah um, but the facilities department does have a request into the company that um runs their automation mm -hmm. for locking the doors and they're going to be separating each set of doors so that Second floor south, first floor south, and first floor north will all have their own kind of functionality so they can be unlocked independent of the others. So are we heading into like once that's done, will 
in the uh, after hours injury the library have to be done through the south here yeah. yeah everything will always have to be coming through the south lobby and this entrance nothing will come through the other side through here. okay right and so like once they fixed that functionality for the locking doors right. um on Saturdays, the only entry point, Saturdays and Sundays, the only entry point into the Civic Center will be at the lower level South Lobby, right. unless there is an event happening on the second floor. Um, but even then, it will probably be the second floor South entrance will be unlocked for people to go in right there, because the North Lobby will still remain locked, okay. and you won't be able to access the second floor from the lower level by stairs, but possibly by the elevator only. I don't know, we haven't worked out that detail, but we're, there's, it's like baby steps to securing all these different sure. spaces. But like, ideally the goal is to get to a point where the only accessible place in this building will be the South Lobby and the lobby, the library on the weekends. Okay, so like for amphitheater events and stuff, people, if people were in the bed out here or one place with the library, they'd have to come through. They'd the have to come through the south side. side. I have to say, behavior has changed tremendously for the better with the north side being closed. Um, a lot of our visitors would come through the north that probably didn't need to come into the library, but they did anyways, which yeah. caused some issues. So yeah. uh, we, uh, time will tell how that it, once they discover south side, but having security guards right yeah. there has stopped a lot of people yeah. coming in that don't have any business in there. Uh, like behavior in civic center generally, like because that caught on and there's less of that seems to be here. even the outside guard i mean we do have individuals that'll hang out there's nothing yeah. wrong with just hanging out you know sitting around the amphitheater or wherever else but they just uh, increased security has kind of changed behavior somewhat okay and uh, uh the pd is also doing rounds that helps kind of push people along yeah so yeah a lot better yeah all right cool um and then Sundays. Just opening the Sunday. Cool. Twelve to five. Is there publicity about that? Um, you know what? There I hadn't thought about doing that, but we are going to put we're gonna just do our own social media posts. Like we, we weren't gonna really do anything bigger with communications for that. We were gonna put something on social media. I think it's actually scheduled for it's either scheduled for tomorrow evening or Thursday evening, and then we're doing um the email okay. I think on Friday morning. Just when that's scheduled. So we're just doing those through our like regular things that the library does. Do they include um, like next door and the stuff like that? Where does the email go? That's one of our other marketing projects is we have a delivery system for emails, but it doesn't talk to our patron database basically. Um, and we can't update emails through that. So that's one of our other things with Marmot that we're talking to them about our, and also with communications for like, how can we use these two different platforms in a more efficient way? Because I, I can't go through 26,000 accounts <laughs> and check it against the emails we already have. So we're trying to figure out how to up, get an update into our email delivery because it has like when I signed up for a library card, I sort of assumed I would start getting an email newsletter. Right. Oh, that, that does not happen. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how to make these two different functionalities work better together because we realize that we're missing out on communication to hundreds, if not thousands, of patrons. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so that's one of the things that we are trying to. To update um, and then figure out if we can make the current email delivery system work for us or if we have to discuss whether we need something different that can work with our patron database functionality so we can have regular updates that are automatic. Because my understanding is the library actually used a different email delivery platform not too long ago and then switched to the current one. So I'm not sure about that. Still trying. And these, these are like those kind of little details that like we sort of knew, like I feel like I knew about this stuff last year, but I'm only now we're getting to dig into this stuff and, and make improvements and corrections to how things are being done. So it's a lot of 
I'm getting back to the basics, just but, what I keep yeah. saying. And, um, but we're we're actually making progress towards it, and I, that's encouraging to me. Out of curiosity, have any numbers on how many users have updated their passwords? Just to like. Um, no, okay. I don't even know if they told us that that's something that okay. we can do, but we might have to ask about that because passwords have to be updated by July 27 or like, or the individual user can update their password themselves up until July 27. And then from that point on, it can only be done by coming into play. Does the account to do it? You do have to do it. You have to have you have to set up a library password. You can for the online account. Yeah, because if you log into your account, it's everybody has a default password. I should have brought one of those flyers in, but you everyone is currently assigned a default password if you had a library card account prior to March 28th. And then if you went to log into the online catalog, you used your default password to log in, it will prompt you to create a unique password. Once you create it, that's all you have to do. And you don't have to ever have to change it. But you have to you have to do it. And this is not Anglewood Public Library's decision. This is Marmot Library then or so all of the member libraries went live with passwords on our it hasn't been too bad. We we get a lot of emails for people who are like logging back in to like Libby or um, not even Hoopla, just Libby for the first time in a while. And like, I'm not sure what's going on. So we just send them the information. We have it posted in the library update section on, on the web page. That was one thing that got added during the closure. There was like a library restroom closure, something or other. And I had communications change the title of it to just library updates. So now we're adding other updates in there and that's where our instructions are for doing the passwords. I think that's a really helpful place to put information. And I was wondering if you could do that, like, like I was wondering if that was useful to other people and if you could use that to like, Back to our newsletter yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So like that's right now. That is that's actually a really good idea because like the newsletter we have, like people had to like submit their emails to it. Um, we did collect a lot of emails at the Spring Festival a couple of weeks ago. So Corinne, Corinne was adding those in. I can't remember exactly how many emails she said she had, but they were, they did a raffle. Yeah. And that was, you know, if you filled it out, there was a box to check to say, please add me to your newsletter so that people could give us permission to add their email to it. I remember I did that. Yeah. So that was just a clever way to, you know, try to get stuff, some more emails that we could put in. And then, um, but yeah, so like we'll use that page where we can play, you know, put other updates um, of some kind. So that's why it's just kind of generically titled library updates now. Um, and then also on the library catalog page, there is a little banner at the top that says passwords are not required, and it has a link back to that update page. That's just to get online. Just to, yeah, just to log into your library card account online. Yeah. So if like you wanted to look at your checkouts or make a hold request to log into your account, you would have to put in your library card number, and now it has to. Tells you how to do it. Yeah, the instructions are available. Yeah. Is are all the boards on the uh, you get the newsletter? Does everybody get the newsletter? I don't get it. Okay. We, I'll make sure that you guys do. Yeah. Because I'll make sure that you guys do. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I occasionally see it because it goes to the like library's email, the EPL email, but the only way I see it. <laughs> But yeah, so that's the long version of what we're doing to yeah. announce that we're opening on some days. And I think Carrie was working on little order sheets. Or social media channels for the Instagram and uh, Facebook. Yeah, I don't know about using Nextdoor. I don't know if the library is a city channel. Nextdoor, I see city announcements. Yeah, and I don't know if there's one for the library. Don't, don't. If there was, it didn't get passed along. I know that Michelle used her personal Nextdoor to right. push stuff out. I feel like there was a rule about city not being able to have it. 
Well, no, correct. They, they can no, it's it's the, the, okay. they, it, there's some limit on response or there's some okay. weird thing like that, but the city has a next door. Okay. So I don't know. I haven't really, we we haven't used it in the library. Yeah. Uh, unless anybody has it personally that they're using it for and sharing stuff. But Scott, you could screenshot and post it. Yeah. <laughs> Share it with your next door network. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. And it can be something nice for a change. Yeah. I hate everybody. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just remind yeah. on the Monday, April 24th, we have the joint CIP meeting. Well, make I'll, sure you know that. I'll, I, I I'll like email it to you. That. I don't think it'll start at early. Sessions are six. And then it may start at seven. six, but okay. we'll make sure you have that information prior. And if anybody else would like to attend, just let us know. But Marie will represent the library board. Yeah, here. Okay. I'll send that to you to me. The only announcement I have is Celebrate Inglewood will be before the next board meeting on May 6th from 10 to 2 right out here at the... Oh, the truck. Yeah, truck. Yeah, so 945 is oh. a sensory, sensory portion of it, cool. so we'll have a quiet time. So any and kids or adults that want to come by um, while it's quiet and see the trucks and... 945. How long does the sensory portion? Till 1015. Okay. And it, it's here this year. It's here this year. Okay. Yeah, it'll be right out front. Uh, oh, so it's, it's here. It's not. Uh -huh. Okay. So what time is it? Uh, it starts at 10 a.m. And it's just the board meeting. No, no, no. This is Celebrate Inglewood. It's an event okay. coming up on May 6th. Board meetings will stay the same time, same thing. And it's uh, food trucks or something? Touch a truck. So kids, the dolls. What's it called? Touch a truck. So we'll have a bunch of city vehicles out. You can come check them out, get up close and personal with a lot of the police command vehicles or public works. We'll have their big trucks out so kids can climb around in them and there'll be city employees showing, giving little tours of the truck and talking about what the truck does. And then there'll be a ton of booths, food trucks, a DJ. Be fun. The library will also have a booth. And so I wanted to them the opportunity to the library board members to volunteer to help library staff at our booth if you would like to, or if you would like to have your own booth. <laughs> but I don't know if that's that might be too big, <laughs> but helping out at the library booth would be welcome. We, I know for sure we'll have at least two staff members there. Um, but based on how busy the spring festival was, I know that that would be helpful. So that's something that I can kind of email out later if anybody yeah. is interested in volunteering. Like, you have to like break it up into shifts. Yeah, yeah, we were probably because it's from 10 to 2. So I didn't know if it would be like we wanted to just do two, two hours or break it into one hours. Like any help is going to be welcome. So and then set it up. What kind of engagement do you get with people at this like that? This um, so they try to do, and I know that here we'll probably do it with offering library card sign up. Um, and um, just talking about programs, telling people about the library. A lot of uh, families come to these types of events. That's why Kimberly always goes. And so she just is kind of catching up with people. Um, and then it's just another opportunity for us to promote some of the services and programs that we're offering. And just kind of talking about the library in general. Kind of for their newsletter. Yeah. 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 Yep. And the you know the QR code is the thing. Too. Yeah. So if there's anything you need, want people to sign up for, respond to, or whatever, I don't know. Yeah. Or you want to put it on something? It seems like that's yeah. such a wonderful. Thing. You'd be surprised though how many people like when you're in person they will they'll yeah. fill stuff out for you because at the black party oh. I had the QR code for that yeah. informal survey I did. Most people wanted to just pull out the paper yeah. and then talk to me while they did it. Yeah, okay. Which is interesting. Some people will take it. Yeah. But it, it is interesting how many people are willing to, you know, and want to just talk to you. Yeah. So, Kimberly is also coming to the Christmas carnival the following Saturday. Mm -hmm. And she said she'd be okay, but I think you're back. I think it's 11 to 2, but. Oh, I don't know what time it is, but yeah. 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 
So we'll send an email. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For both dates. Yeah, but I think um, definitely for the celebrate yeah. Inglewood, I'll make some kind of like sign up for time slots. Perfect. For that. Yeah. And then the other thing I found is that the library art exhibit is live um, up, and um, the artist reception is going to be on Thursday, April 20th at, from 5.30 to 6.30. Here at the library. Would you email that to us? I will. Is it over? I was the person. Like, it's that is on my to do list. Okay. Because yeah. I got to get that. I was hoping to do that last week, but I don't remember what happened last week. It didn't come to fruition. I think we just had, we actually had a lot of people call up sick last week for some reason. Um, so that's what I'm working on this week. I think that up. Oh, yeah. yeah, did you email Dwayne? Thank you so much for pointing out that I didn't have the link in there. Uh -huh. He emailed me back and he's like, Where is it? But my original email to the staff, I forwarded Lindsay Runyon's email, but then I decided to like do a better email for you guys because I also had to find everybody's email addresses to put it in. Um, but yeah, so the um, Englewood um, Chamber of Commerce has an annual business awards. And the library has been nominated for the Innovation and Sustainability Award. So um, I did um, do a second email that has that information and the link in there. Not that I told you this, but if you do it from different browsers, you can vote. Yeah, vote early, vote often. Mine to vote is April 27th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, board members choice. Uh, Dwayne, do you have anything? Um, just a reminder, I think I told you this last time, May 16th, if uh, any of you have any interest in uh, learning more about being a school board member, we'll be doing that at five o'clock before the uh, before the board meeting. That's over at the uh, early childhood uh, at Maddox. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had this year's Elevate Inglewood cohort descended in mass upon Myself and the superintendent, Gina, was there. Um, a great conversation. Uh, I'm going to talk to you right after this meeting. We're going to, we have a follow-up meeting scheduled with that group that's going to help us with uh, communication. Okay. Oh, How are we telling our story? Because it became very clear to us during that meeting, <laughs> um, that we're not hitting all of the avenues and channels we should be hitting to tell to tell our story. So it did, it did repeatedly, repeatedly. Yes, and we occupied a good part of the discussion, but um, so I'm going to talk to you after this meeting for that. Um, I don't know if you all know if you um, uh, if you have kids in the district, you certainly saw we had a swatting incident at the uh, tech campus where the high school and the middle schools are at several weeks ago. Um, pretty horrifying. My kids texting me from a closet They're there on lockdown. However, all of the training and everything was uh, in full effect and they had that entire campus locked down in under two minutes. So that at least was good. Fortunately, it was a swatting incident. It wasn't a real, real event, but um, scary. What's a swatting? It's a uh, sort of a fake call comes into the police department or to the school saying that they're, uh, this particular one said, I'm standing outside your school and I'm gonna start shooting. And they had gunfire noises and people screaming on the voicemail and stuff. That and they did it to several schools yeah. that day, probably, I think 10 or 11 schools and they hit a few more the next day too. So it, it was a, it was sort of a prank school shooting uh, phone call. That's what's swatting. Yeah. Yes. It, yes. It seems like because you'll, you'll get swatting people call back. Right. Like people are right. But this is a thing that's happening nationally. It it's is. Not just a it is. thing. Yeah. Like NPR, CPR. Yes. Covered yeah. a story on this and it was kind of like, yeah, you know, they have a descriptor and they, and they have a fake teacher's name and then. You know, it's concerning enough in which you would call, of course, you know, but yeah, how traumatic for these kids and the, their parents and teachers. Yeah. And the first responders, too. Yeah, no, they and first. Yeah, and that's, yeah, because everything that's, I mean, they to they that's where that. they go. That, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. The PD, they were there within yeah. minutes. So, just a yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but can also they trace it? Like, can they trace it? It's, they have figured out a way that it's almost untraceable. Well, there are ways to do like like phone protocols where you can bounce a call 20 times during the oh. morning. So as far as we would not heard that they've tracked that 
person or those persons down yet. So I don't know. Probably never, probably never will. But anyway, um, let's see. And then, um, yeah, and then mortgages, we had to, um, we've been able to hold off on any budget cuts for the last several years for a variety of, you know, some of the taking advantage of the complexities of school funding and and then some of the federal stimulus money the last couple of years. But um, uh, for this next year, we've had to uh, make some cuts, unfortunately. Um, uh, the good news is we are contemplating going out for a mill levy this year. There's a, uh, there's a couple different ways to do a mill levy. We're almost at capacity on our normal mill levy, but there's a, uh, there's a different mill levy right here in Colorado because because the funding in the state sucks for public education. So they give us this other little place to go try and do another mill. That would allow us then to apply some of that money to specific things like technology or transportation, and then move corresponding amounts of money back into the general fund. If it if it goes out, it will hit the November ballot. It will be uh, then go into effect in January. So um, the budget cycle this year was a little painful. And uh, no, how much was cut? Uh, about 15% across the board, which in a district this small is draconian. I mean, our entire budget is 32, $33 million a year, and 95% of that is people in a school district, obviously. Um, so it's pretty painful. We had some temporary you know, stimulus or other temporary funding positions that were the first to go. Um, obviously, probationary status folks were next. Um, so, um, We've been able to hold that off for the last few years with some, just some other ways to do that, but uh, this year it hit us pretty hard. So, how are other schools, school systems like in Denver it, cutting or? Yeah, oh yeah, and everybody uh, is, and a lot of districts, all of our neighboring districts are closing schools as well. Closing schools, they're just shutting them down. Yeah, so uh, Littleton is, Cherry Creek is. Um, Douglas okay. County, Jeff Coe is shutting down schools. So um, we're not at that point. So that's that's a good thing. But 15% in a district this small, I don't, in a budget that small is. Schools are going to be looking for volunteers to help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm cutting that up at Queen. So anyway. Yes, <laughs> there will be ample fun. volunteer opportunity yeah. uh, at our school starting in the fall. So if any of you are interested. Mill no, levies are for operating. <laughs> Correct. Bond issues are for physical. <laughs> Capital and then mill levies are for basically inside the building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good luck. Englewood's never turned down. Bond or mill levies. Pretty amazing. We, we've been pretty fortunate. I yeah. got to chair the 2011 and the 2016 bond. 2011, 2011 passed by what, like a half a vote? Remember that? <laughs> the band that I think of it. And, and, and then up in the morning. And it took us, yeah, several days yeah. for that one. But uh, so keep your eye on that. If any of you want to come walk the neighborhood and hand out flyers uh, late summer, early fall, um, um, we'll have opportunity. How are you uh, uh, heading up your volunteer group to turn it? If we decide, so the board will have to vote to to actually do this. At, um, sorry, I don't mean to take up your whole meeting, but I'll just talk all night. <laughs> the library's closed, so. Um, um, and then we'll we'll have to establish a committee with a chairperson or co-chairs and a treasurer, and and then that's all the communication and all the volunteer activities will will be coordinated out of that group. So, but I promise to keep you updated at every one of these. Are you talking about the mill levy? Yeah. For that volunteer, yeah, and then the school, like we're I'm setting it up at Clayton. Oh, so at the so individual schools? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you could reach out to the district office. You can get my email off the invite to this meeting and get a hold of me, or you can reach out directly to a principal at any of the schools if there's one close to you that you want to go volunteer at.